My name is Mohamed Moti. I'm a professor of clinical hematology in Paris at the Saint Antoine Hospital and this is University Pierre and Marie Curie. I'm heading the hematology department there. I'm also the current president of the European Society for Blood and Marrow Transplantation. And uh, for many years, myeloma has been a major focus of my clinical and research interest. And as a transplanter, bearing in mind that myeloma is the first indication for stem cell transplantation, uh, you can guess that I am highly interested in multiple myeloma. This is a group of different agents uh, that include thalidomide, lenalidomide, and pumalidomide. Uh, one must acknowledge that we don't know the exact mechanism of action of these drugs. There is a lot of research ongoing. However, we know that one of the mechanism of action of these agents is related to the effect on the immune system, on the modulation, uh, on the reset of some of these immune response, on trying to stimulate some of these immune effectors that are going to allow to fight against the cancer cells. And in the case of myeloma, we know that these agents, thalidomide, lenalidomide, pumalidomide, can uh, destroy the myeloma cell through different pathways. And this is what we put under the umbrella of immunomodulatory agents. Actually, uh, this is really a very important question because these days, almost all of the new agents coming into the treatment arena of multiple myeloma are actually combined with these so-called immunomodulatory agents. Actually, the new agents are rarely used as a single agent, but they are either combined with these immunomodulatory agents and these combinations are proving to be highly uh, effective even in some uh, relapsed and resistant uh, myeloma uh, cases. Carfuzumab is uh, what we call a second generation proteasome inhibitor. The uh, first drug that is the first generation was, is bortezomib. And corfizumib has a different mechanism of action and it can overcome the, uh, some of the cases which are resistant to bortezomib. And there is research uh, suggesting this. In the different clinical trials, especially when carfizumib was combined with lenalidomide dexamethasone, this is the so-called ASPIRE trial, it was clearly shown that in the relapsed myeloma setting, this triplet combination of carfizumib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone can lead to superior results compared to as a standard doublet combination with lenalidomide dexamethasone. So definitely carfizumib is a new uh, key player in the field of multiple myeloma, especially in the relapse setting uh, these days, where it has started to be used in uh, many uh, places uh, in different uh, countries. One should remember that until recently, uh, the uh, myeloma community, the myeloma research uh, community was really struggling, uh, trying to find 
a sort of a monoclonal antibody. We know that monoclonal antibodies are a highly effective family of drugs that are widely used in the field of lymphoma. These are the cancer of the lymph nodes. And of course, one would like to see a monoclonal antibody that is active in myeloma. And this is where the ratumumab uh, was able to fill this gap because the ratumumab can target an antigen, namely CD38, that is highly present on the myeloma tumor cells. And it was shown that the ratumumab is able to uh, kill myeloma cells, even those cells which were resistant to many other available uh, agents. So this is why it is very exciting because the drug is highly effective as a single agent, but we also have data showing that when you combine it with the other available agents like imids or like bortezomib, you can also achieve a very, very high level of response. So this is why the whole community is very excited about this new drug, because it is likely that in the future, many of our widely used uh, treatment combinations will be actually uh, combined to daratumumab, as we usually do in the case of lymphoma with other monoclonal antibodies. This is a very uh, complex uh, question that can take us many hours actually to sort it out. However, uh, to make a long story short, I think we have quite long experience with allogenic stem cell transplantation in myeloma and what we have learned from all of this body of evidence that is available is that allogenic stem cell transplantation, while it can cure a small number of patients, especially when it comes to the relapse setting, allogenic stem cell transplantation it didn't prove to be highly effective because of the increased risk of disease recurrence after transplant. So, in terms of feasibility, allogenic stem cell transplantation can be feasible. However, we are still struggling with disease control after uh, transplantation. Also, of course, allogenic stem cell transplantation as a procedure has a higher level of side effects and toxicities and morbidities compared to autologous stem cell transplantation. This is why today, with the advent of all of these novel agents, I think uh, many uh, physicians in the myeloma community are uh, considering that we should not uh, offer allogenic stem cell transplantation to the majority of patients. Of course, some patients may still benefit, but this is, uh, needs to be discussed on a case-per-case -case basis. But definitely, the decrease of the enthusiasm is mainly related to the introduction of many other more effective and safer treatment options. I think despite the introduction of highly effective novel drugs, it is clear today based on new protocols, new randomized trials, that autologous stem cell transplantation is here to stay. Because even when you use the so-called novel modern therapies, but if you combine them with auto -trans autologous stem cell transplantation, this is where you are going to achieve the best disease control. So in my opinion, the debate today is not about whether we should oppose autologous stem cell transplantation to non-transplant therapies, namely drugs. Actually, what we should aim to do, 
and uh, this is uh, many protocols are going in the same direction is actually how are we going to combine all of these options together to optimize the outcome of a given patient. There is a lot of enthusiasm today about the use of, in general, what we call cellular therapies and immune therapies. And the superstar is this so-called CAR T-cell. So just to describe it in a very simplistic fashion, it is a sort of a manipulation of an immune cell, an immune effector, namely the T-cell. And we know that these T-cells can uh, kill a tumor cells. However, you need to manipulate them. You need to manufacture them, I would say, uh, in a way that they can go to the right target. So you can direct them to the right target. And once they reach this target, then they do the killing process. It's like, you know, sending soldiers into the field of the battle. There is a lot of excitement about the use of these so-called CAR T cells in different uh, hematologic and blood cancers. Uh, there are very exciting results in acute lymphoblastic leukemia. But there are indeed some reports suggesting efficacy in multiple myeloma. I don't think in the near future the CAR T cells are going to replace all the other myeloma therapies. However, I think this represents another promising treatment option for the future, but we still need to do the trials, to refine uh, how to use them, and maybe try to find out what is the right setting to use these cells in the natural history of a myeloma disease. More and more effective immunotherapeutic drugs, these are agents that are able to overcome the tolerance of the immune system, in another word, drugs that are able to stimulate the immune system to fight the cancer cells are being introduced with very exciting results. And I believe in the field of myeloma, this is gonna happen. There are already ongoing trials about drugs that are able to manipulate uh, some uh, checkpoint at the level of the immune system and probably we will be able in the future to combine these uh, immunotherapeutic tools with the other anti-myeloma drugs in order to further optimize the outcome of myeloma. Over the last few years, despite the introduction of novel drugs. We've been using almost the same treatments for all patients, irrespective uh, of the fact that the disease can be very different from one patient to another. I think the technological advances, uh, research data uh, incoming now, will allow us in the future probably to personalize or at least to tailor the therapy based on some subgroup of patient. I think it's more reality than hype, but it is always difficult and it takes time to validate this kind of approaches. But definitely, I think this is uh, the uh, way to follow for the future. I am actually excited about many things ongoing in the field of myeloma and unfortunately I cannot claim that I'm excited by one versus another approach. I think in general uh, what is really exciting that we have today in hands besides stem cell transplantation a huge variety 
of drugs with different mechanism of action. So the challenge for the near future for us is to try to refine the use of these different agents and most importantly to try to find the right sequence for the right patient. I think this is the most challenging part of uh, our uh, job these days is to try to find out the right setting when and how and for how long should we use uh, a given drug combination.